Hello, welcome back or welcome to my channel. My name is Taylor and today we'll be doing my June reading wrap up. But before we hop in the video, remember to like, comment, and subscribe if you love all things books. For about the first week of June, I was coming off of the reading slump that pretty much started at the end of April and kind of carried through pretty much all of May. And I've learned that as someone who works in academia and is going to school, apparently that first month or two, like either May or June coming into summer break, always tends to be where I get slumped out because my brain is like, time to take a break and not read. But either way, let's talk about some monthly reading stats. In terms of moods this month, I read mostly emotional and tense reads, which to be fair, I can see it. Mostly medium paced books, and most of them, like 50% of them were under 300 pages. So we were on our novella game, all were fiction, and pretty much most of them were contemporary romance, so. And yeah, I had at least three queer books in there for Pride. We love it. We love to see it. And my average rating for the month was a 4.56, and I did have a couple five stars, and I can't wait to tell you about them. We did kind of make it through my physical TBR this month, starting out with The Grimoire of Grave Fates by various authors, although it was created by Hannah Alcoff and Margaret Owen. So this follows, an, it's kind of an anthology, short story anthology, and it's set up basically, there is this school of magic, like Galileo School, Galileo Academy of Magic, you know, in this world, and they've recently diversified their population. And in this story, you're starting out with the professor of magical history that everyone hates, Septimius Dropwort, is killed and murdered. And then you're essentially following the entire investigation from hour one, from when he's murdered to when the murderer is caught. And you're following 18 different students, you know, created by 18 different authors. This is queer. And this is basically, like I said, in my review, if you like the concept of Harry Potter but don't like J.K. Rowling and want something that is actually trans inclusive, this is the book for you. And you know, surprisingly enough, she has a hardcover. I really did enjoy this one. It took me a bit to get through because it's, you know, you've got a lot of point of views that you're switching through and there's some like fun little like case files in here that you can kind of like get into. And I gave it four and a half stars. Not quite five star material, but you know, a still a still a fun read, a fun read for pride. Then I read the third book in the Teachers in Love series or Interconnected Standalone series by M.A. Wardell, and that was Napkins and Other Distractions. So this story follows Principal Kent Lester, who after seven years of not dating post-divorce, has decided to re-enter the dating market. And he's going on his first date with a man in a couple decades, because I believe it said the last time he was on a date with a man was high school, and then he was married to a woman for a couple decades. And well... He encounters Vincent, who is struggling with OCD and, you know, finding the one. And, you know, after a one-night stand encounter, things ensue from there. It's, we've got, like, forced proximity, workplace, all that sort of information. Obviously, check trigger warnings for this one. As I have said... This is by far the spiciest of all the Teachers in Love books. Now, it really just depends. I like me a spicy read. It, although it kind of felt like spice was happening every couple of chapters. So if that's a not, a not for you, this one might not be for you. But kind of like the first book is kind of like medium. Second one's like, ooh, spicy. And this one's like, oh, there's a lot. But he's also kind of rediscovering his sexuality and his sexual preferences at an older age. And it does feature a bisexual man over the age of 50. So if you're looking for that one, I do recommend 4.25. Then I finally finished the Mindfuck series because I am in my Criminal Minds era again and I needed a little something something to satisfy that vibe. So I finished by reading All the Lies and Paint It All Red, the two closing novellas to the series. So if you don't know anything about the Mindfuck series, it is a series of five novellas by S.T. Abbey and it follows a female serial killer who starts to fall in love with the FBI agent on her case. And you know, it just follows they're the case that they're on and all sort of like messy things that go on. I will say you need to check trigger warnings for this one as well because it is very graphic in its descriptions of violence and other things that go on in the story. Surprisingly enough, I think it's counted as erotica, but I would say it's not too, not really that spicy, but now to each their own. I will say in terms of like my ranking of the books, I think All the Lies, the fourth book, is my favorite 
maybe followed up by book five, then book two, and then maybe three, then one, or one, then three. I'm not completely sure. But this one is just a fun, quick, fast-paced read for those looking for a thriller, you know, with a lot of female empowerment in it. Then I read A Dowry of Blood because I am also in my interview with the vampire era and I just watched the season finale yesterday and oh my god, I want to read the books now. But this one, on the other hand, is a historical fiction fantasy? I'm not completely sure. But it essentially follows the Brides of Dracula from the point of Constanta. We don't even know Dracula. Dracula's name is unimportant, but that is who you're following. And you're kind of following her recount of her first meeting him all the way up to her killing him. And you kind of have that. And the version I did read had a little bit of a novella after following one of the other brides. But, you know, we've got polyamory. We've got some bisexuality in here. This one is definitely heavy on, like very much show the pros and the message behind it of like giving a voice to those who now never had a voice especially those who are survivors of like abusive and toxic exes this one is a 4.5 i appreciate everything it did i guess i just wasn't as enthralled by my like by the storyline that it gave because it is kind of a slower ish read even though it's 235 pages but Definitely recommend if you're looking for something in that historical fantasy genre. Then Lauren Asher has released her new book. And if you know anything, I read all of her books last year. So now I am caught up and we are at Love Unwritten, which is the second book in her new interconnected standalone series, the Dreamland Billionaire series. So this one is following billionaire Rafa who has shut off from love after his bad experience with his ex-wife. But he and his son are going to go on vacation with the son's nanny, Ellie. And Ellie's dealing with her own things. She's dealing with her own, own trauma. You know, while they're hanging out and, you know, getting along on vacation, romance ensues from there. This is by far her slowest of burns. And if you know anything about me, sometimes slow burns are just a little bit slow for me. So I only gave it 4.25 stars. I definitely think I liked Loved Redesigned more than I like this version. But the one that's coming out next year is the one I have been waiting for. So I can't wait, can't wait to see what that one is. This one has discusses some very triggering topics. So again, check your content and trigger warnings. I won't really say this is Grumpy Sunshine. It's kind of like Grumpy Less Grumpy, but that's the vibes we've got you know, boss, employee, workplace, forced proximity, and you know, things like that. She also is, she falls first because she had a crush on him in high school, you know, a lot of that. And I will say the kid in this one is so cute. He does, he actually adds and furthers the plot. So if you're looking for a book like that, Single Dad, this one's for you. And then I finally picked a book that I've had on my physical TBR for a few months that I've just been staring at. And it's Dread Nation by Justina Ireland. And I believe this is the first book in a duology. At least I'm pretty sure it's a duology. And this is a YA historical slash horror fantasy that basically answers the question, what would happen if during the Battle of Gettysburg in the American Civil War, zombies rose from the ground and started, you know, eating on everybody? And it kind of just follows the events kind of like, I think 15 or 16. I don't know. I'm not completely sure how old Jane is in the story, but I know it takes place in the 1880s. It's the point that we are at. And obviously, since it's taking place in 1880s America, there's a lot of things that go on that you're going to need to check out. Trigger warnings for. And it discusses a lot of heavy topics, and there is certain language that some people may not like. But this one was really easy to fly through. Even though the content is a little heavier, the writing is so well done that it just makes you go beat, beat, beat going through. And I will say I am curious to see where the romance and the friendship goes through this. And also there's a little bisexual, asexual representation in here, even though it's not marketed as LGBTQ+, it's kind of like small there. But if you're looking for that, this one is out there. Then we close out the month with a cute rom-com and my first official Harlequin novel from their Afterglow series, and that is The Boyfriend Subscription from Steven Salvatore. Apparently, this is a queer, pretty woman retelling, and it does mention pretty woman in there, but I completely forgot that while reading it. And essentially, you're following Teddy, who is down on his luck, like horticulturist, plant guy, and while out and about, you know, you know, in his misery, he runs into a rich man at a bar who happens to be the really rich guy owner of a sex work app. And these two strike up a deal so that Teddy will be this guy's fake boyfriend, his name's Cole, um, to a business dinner and his family wedding. Because, you know, 
things happen and he needs to like put forth a good front. Obviously fake dating, fake dating, forced proximity. This is very insta lovey. Like they fall in love in under like a week. So if you are not into that, this is not for you. It's also a short, quick read. So you might want to check some trigger warnings. For, yeah, you do need to check trigger warnings for this one because there's a particular scene that I am thinking of. Basically check trigger warnings for everything you read is the moral of this, this story. But this one was a cute one. I gave it 4.5, no 4.25 stars. Uh, and I gave 4.75 to Dread Nation and 4.25 to Love Unwritten if I didn't say that. Oh well. And that's the last book I read this month. Let me know what your favorite book was that you read this month and what books should I be adding to my list next.